Hey everybody, Krista Horn, your mining coach, and I am very excited this week. We have with us Cornel Fester, and we're going to talk about technology today. And I, I've, I've had the privilege of working with Cornel. He is an amazing person, uh, an amazing dad, father, husband, and just wonderful in technology and its applications in the mining industry. And so if you're joining the Mining Coach podcast for the first time, welcome. It is all about adding value to your life. It's all about helping anybody in the industry. It doesn't matter whether you are a qualified professional just looking to grow your career or whether you're just doing a job, any job at any level in the mining industry and you just want to become the best version of yourself. You are at the right place. And Cornell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for making the time. I know you're super busy and welcome today. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, really, uh, really great to be here with you and to see you again. I'm excited for, for today's uh, chat. Yeah, indeed. And we're going to talk about technology. So when you and I had a discussion before the time, you chose the topic of t- technology, but maybe I should just introduce you to our listeners and, and those that are watch- going to watch on, on YouTube as well. And please do so. And if you need the resources, it's www.theminingcoach.com and we'll be able to you'll be able to find all sorts of um, contact points and resources on the website. But getting back to Cornell, Cornell is an electronic engineer. So now for those that have listened to my very first podcast, that was the career I ventured off straight out out of school and uh, never never ending or never ended up becoming an electronic engineer. But Cornell is one. And He's done you know, like sort of further studies in, in masters in um, in in his engineering field. He was in the energy sector, and then he moved into consulting. And now, um, then he went and worked in an a international mining company, a Canadian listed mining company. Did some wonderful work, and that's where I got to know Cornell. He um, he really understands service delivery, and him and his team did some amazing work where I've had the privilege of being on the receiving end of the technology work that they've done for us. And I just want to talk today to Cornell. Cornell, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, the stuff that I left out, but anything that you want to share with our listeners about who's Cornell and, you know, uh, how is he, where he is today? Oh, thanks, Christopher. I think you 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 touched on some points i'll maybe start professionally and then i'll move to the to the personal the personal side um studied electronic engineering did my master's degree in smart grids actually which is a you know it's technology on the energy grid and specifically communication and transparency on the energy grid really um was or i'm still quite passionate about that and started my career in 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 energy um and he spent one year working as a what I would technically describe as an engineer, um, and then moved over to the consulting side. Um, so I think I had the privilege really of early in my career being exposed <clears throat> to um, to projects and and situations that really helped me to understand how big companies work in the back end, um, and how the management of those companies work, uh, which which really forced me to either sink or swim and it was it was a, a challenge um i had to step up but it it was also a great growth opportunity um but always even though i was doing uh, very management consulting heavy work i've always had this kind of inclination towards technology and digital work um and i'll get a bit more into 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 that maybe later in the podcast why but but always ask this question, how can technology help us to better manage um, companies and to make operations more efficient and really develop a, 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 a passion or a, a interest around that. Um, then after four years in the energy industry, I had a friend who was doing management consulting in mining and he gave me a call one day. I think it was one of those providential calls because it was a day that I was particularly frustrated um, at some of the things I was facing, which probably helped um, the decision, but decided to, um, he, he asked me to start an interview process. So I decided to pursue that and then made uh, made the shift into, into the mining industry. 
um, where for a year and a half, I did all types of different uh, management consulting and strategic work. And then again, started focusing in very heavily after getting a bit of an understanding of the industry, very heavily into the technology side. Um, then joined a mining company. So made the shift from helping um, or consulting to companies for how to use technology to actually having to do it myself, um, which was, which was I, I wanted to do that. And I, I really actually enjoyed that challenge. Um, and I, I see myself as, 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 blessed in that sense being able to be on both sides the consulting side and and the client side being able to experience both sides um and more recently started working uh, for a a company where we again do engineering consulting work but i'm specifically focusing on building digital products and tools that help mining clients get a competitive advantage so that's that's my professional um my professional history some of it on a personal side um, yeah, like you mentioned, I, I recently actually became a father. I've got a, a almost two-year-old and another one on the way that really changes one's life, but it's a, it's a massive privilege. Um, if I had to ask the question, who is Cornell? I think central to me is, is my faith um, in Jesus. That's really been, you know, um, not just a passion, but really central to, to my character and my development. Um, and I think because of that, also uh, my my hobbies outside of of work, um, I really I I'm involved in a local church, and I'm I'm really passionate about about ministry and teaching the Bible, um, and had the the opportunity to do that more over the last few years, which has been great. Um, my family, I'm married to to a wonderful wife now for almost six years, um, and we live in 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 the Cape Town area. And yeah, I think uh, learning learning to become a dad has has kind of drowned out the rest of my hobbies. But but if if I'm not um, working or with my family, I like riding my mountain bike and playing golf. And I'm 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 like an out and out nerd. I would I would classify myself as an out and out nerd. I love everything. I program um, also in my spare time, and I'm really into some some things which. Um, which I guess people would classify as really nerdy, like reading, reading uh, Lord of the Rings or, you know, stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of who I am. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't classify you as a nerd having worked work with you closely. Uh, I, I know you're super bright and, you know, you do all of this wonderful technology stuff, but definitely you, what I think it's, it's the mining in, in so many ways is a people game. So the technology piece is, you know, we sometimes think about technology as this person sitting behind a computer somewhere in a dark room and they just, you know, have got five or six screens around them. But that's not really all of the technology stuff. And so much of the success of technology is really about the people game. And, and you are really good with people. And you just mentioned the fact that, you know, there's there's a lot more to Cornell than just technology. But how difficult is the people side of the business for you and in the technology space of adopting technology for mining companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's, that's a really good question, especially in the context of mining, because I think mining in the, the mining industry or mining companies present quite a different context than, than some other industries. Um, I would say that my experience has actually varied around how difficult it is to to implement technology uh, the, the kind of key lesson that i've learned is that for any type of change whether it's tech, technological or anything people really have to understand the value of why they're being asked to to do something differently um, and also the level at which they're being asked to do it differently so like whether it's something which is just a small behavioral change versus a transformative change um, needs to be approached differently but but you're right. I mean, um, I found that in in all of the initiatives that have been successful that I've been involved in, a lot of my time was not necessarily spent building an awesome tool, but it was spent on the ground with the person getting to know their circumstances and getting to understand why this tool would um, would would change or, or would help them. And and oftentimes that actually leads to changing our initial idea of what the product should work like. Um, because the, the truth is, you know, in, in mining where you are trying to bring technology in as something that augments or helps someone to do something better, 
if that person doesn't use it, you, you're not going to have success. So it's, it's almost better to have um, a tool, which is not maybe your ideal design, but which really that person sees as valuable and they're going to use it um, in their, in their day to day than to have the, the perfect solution. Um, and I've, I've learned that that balance is, is important um, and, and helping people to, to understand the value is, is, is really, is really key. So it's not just about writing programs and finding the machine learning algorithms and um, creating fancy dashboards and mining the data. It's, it's making sure that adds value to people. Have there been any major failures and lessons learned that you could share with us? I'm sure we all have those, but some maybe one of or two examples on your side. I, I think, you know, um, I'll think about some examples in a moment, but I think the, the, the kind of, for, for me, where, where failure oftentimes happens when implementing technology is when you try to make it technology driven instead of uh, the process or the person driven. So we start with the technology and you ask, wow, there's this amazing new, you know, shiny technology. We need to do this and we need to do it now. And we don't really know how or why, but, but we're just going to do it um, versus you start with the people or the process. You say, my company is a, it's a, it's whatever it is. It's a bread baking company. So, you know, I'm only going to apply technologies that help me to bake bread better. Um, and I'm going to be selective on them because I, I, I honestly believe that people are, people are very, people are not um, in like, people are not stupid. They, they understand that they can see if there's not a, a reason why, you know, and, um, and, and, and getting them there is really important. So I think in terms of failures, um, I think I've seen, I mean, I'm thinking of some specific examples now where, where we developed, uh, for example, uh, reporting tools or dashboards that, that help people to, um, to do their jobs better by, by, by uh, being able to understand information better. So I'm thinking in the energy sector, we did some work um, that that we actually presented at at Parge in Africa around dispatching of resources, energy resources, but um, the the disconnect in that case did happen with with the person who was supposed to do it. That it was like you know people who had been using the same tool for twenty years, and um, if I come to you after twenty years of you doing the same thing, and I do a a not a very thorough job of helping you to understand what the value is in using something new. That's kind of where things fall apart because people, I mean, we just, we, we really like going back to our comfort zones. Um, and, and, and you have to, you have to kind of also help people out of that. And I think yeah. in cases like that, we didn't see full success. Oh, I had first end experience and you talk about, you know, once again, the people side of the business, which is why this podcast exists because mining is all about people at the end of the day, we can, can have everything, but you know, at the end of the day, it's people that, that make those gears go around. You've touched on inclusivity and making people understand the why, how important is inclusivity to you when adopting a new technology? Well, essential, you know, I, I really believe that you have to bring people along on the journey. And I think there are so many levels of that because if you talk about being inclusive with technology, um, and I'm just talking about including the people who actually are going to be using or who are affected by the technology. Yeah. I mean, on the one sense, you have, I need to include them to help them understand why this, this is important. Yes. But oftentimes in the mining industry, you've got people coming in putting technologies down and another level of inclusivity is like you don't actually help people to take ownership of the technologies and to own it internally going forward. Um, you know, so that's something I've seen is where, where unfortunately sometimes works get work gets done. And after the people who do that work, leave a company or, or they're, they're on an engagement and they go, um, the people who actually now need to take this thing over were never really bought into it. Um, so it's not theirs. It's it's something which which they see as foreign, and because of that, um, you know, it, 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 there's no there's no sustainability. There's no continuation. So I believe that that you have to include people um, on the journey of implementing tech. Oh, thanks. That's yeah. That's so brilliant. the The mining industry has been sort of lagging behind in many ways to the rest of the world in terms of employing technology and using technology 
uh, to, you know, just to improve the industry as a whole. Where do you see technology going with the mining industry? I think that's like, that. that's a major point, Christy, because I actually see that, you know, people often say that in a negative sense, the mining industry is lagging behind. And I think that's really true. Um, I think that there are a lot of, there are a lot of places where the mining industry has been slow to take technologies up, but there are also places where that's not the case. Um, but I see that as a massive opportunity because mm. it just it makes it makes people like my job so much easier because these are these are tools and 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 and, and technologies that have been proven in other industries. Um, and the question of the question is no longer are they valuable. The question is how do we use them right in yeah. our context. Um, so, so I think that that's that's a massive that's a massive opportunity, and specifically in the in the mining industry, um, I, I mean the mining industry has been changed by technology uh, a lot up to now, but more I, I would say like a, especially on the hardware side. So, um, you know, yeah. uh, modern mining is 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 mechanized, or there's there's so many there's so much you know development and and innovation in terms of the equipment that we use even the techniques or some of the software like the planning software and the things that we use but there are areas especially on the softer i i say softer side because it's not it's maybe not seen as 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 um as a direct technology application yeah. um but but things like data analytics or using machine learning applications i i really think that's where a big part of the opportunity lies because these are really mature tools um, that that hold so much promise for different applications in mining, but they just haven't been done, or the interest has not really been there to ask the question. Well, let's let's really make the most of of you know what has come to to maturity in other industries. Yeah, thanks for that. We a lot about developing and helping people on this podcast, and you a some of our listeners is maybe just considering a career change and thinking about technology. And I've just last week, I had a, a social event with where I met a person for the first time. And this person has got no formal education on, on the technology software side of things, but he has taught everything himself. He is, you know, earning a very, very good salary. He's, you know, he's like, I wouldn't say Bill Gates. He hasn't got Bill Gates's money. But he's got, you know, he's, he's taught himself everything. He's absolutely passionate about technology, about uh, writing programs, writing software, um, designing a design engineer, no formal qualification. However, he's passionate about what he does and he's probably streaks ahead of a lot of people with degrees. What would you say to a person in the mining industry that is considering that sort of well, mining is not the right place to do this, but I'm I'm an operator somewhere, but I love, you know, sitting behind my computer in the evenings and, you know, when I'm off shift and I'm writing programs. Is there a future for people like that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think I'm I'm also a benefactor of this, but but the learning resources that have become available for free, you know, um there's there's so many people saying nowadays the internet is a free university. Because exactly. you can you can learn if if you are willing you can learn in the technology field pretty much anything um, that that you need to learn on the internet. I think that um, I've I've tried you know I've I've done it myself and I've trained people using using digital resources and the question is oftentimes just the self discipline to sit down and and to and to actually learn these things because if you're enrolled in a course i think there's some benefit that comes with that and some peer pressure yes. which is great you know yeah. so maybe it's a good idea to embark on this journey with others um and and to keep each other accountable but but there really is there really is so much out there um to help people i i, I would say even though i have a a degree in electronic engineering the the tools that i use on a daily basis a lot of it i picked up um through self learning uh, online yeah. Um, you know, so, so absolutely. And also I'm, I'm not surprised to hear that you, that you met someone like that. I think it's going to become um, more of a common thing. I mean, I'm also, I'm hiring um, in, in technology or I've been hiring in technology for a while now. And it's amazing to see like th there definitely is, you know, when, when you see someone has been through university, it, it tells you some things, I mean, they've got, you at least know they've got perseverance, you know, they've, they, they've, 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 they've um, they can they can complete something and all that stuff, but 
But oftentimes the people with the best skills are not necessarily the people with the best degree. Yes. Um, you, you, you can't take it for granted anymore, yes. you know, because the skills that you're looking for are, um, and technology is interesting because, I mean, even, even from its onset um, in the software world, you had this concept of open source and I, I, it's not a history lesson, but, but there, was this, there was this kind of drive in technology to say that, especially software, you know, we're going to, we're going to make things available freely so that people can participate. And, yeah. and, and that, is, that is continued. Um, yeah. and, and especially like the software environment is very community driven. So there, there are places online that you can slot into that, that you can interact with people right now. I mean, that are going to teach you that, that it's, it's really, it's really something amazing, you know, something which I think is, 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 is so if it's just having, if you get access to that, I think most people will see, you know, it's not, not that hard to actually pick up these skills. There are resources that can help you. And if you to, were to advise somebody that says, look, I'm, I'm ready for that change. How do I prepare myself for that? Uh, what do they do? What do they do? Yeah. So I think that um, it starts with picking up the skills because some of the, some of the skills that, that you need are, are skills that are going to take a, little, a bit of time to learn. Um, if I look at my own journey, I probably had, I mean, I was in a sense, um, I wouldn't say lucky, but, but I used lockdown for that. So when we went into lockdown, I kind of used it as my, as my training school, you know, I had a lot more time on my hands. So I started picking up some, some skills, which I previously didn't have. Um, and, and you're going to have to invest some time in that. So starting off by just deciding which direction you want to go into technology, um, or if we talk about like the data field, there are some pretty well-defined career paths and a simple Google search will help you to, to identify those. So first you need to pick what you're going to be doing um, because these, these fields are relatively specialized, but then you'll have to invest some time in it. Yeah. So being, you know, investing, um, I would say at least six months to a year, um, upskilling yourself. Another piece of advice I would get, give is get a mentor um, so you don't need to have a mentor in your physical environment. You can look uh, for people online, you know, that, that you can see are doing similar types of work, et cetera. My mentor is in Australia. Um, we wow. chat, you know, yeah. every, every, every um, few weeks and uh, he doesn't work in exactly the same field that I do, but, but he gives me, a, you know, he's really just further down the line than I'm. So finding someone like that and being able to, um, to ask them questions and to give them advice on what you need to do next, because we do get stuck is really valuable. Yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, consider if consider a, 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 a course, right? There, there are lots yeah. of um, online courses that you can do to just get something behind your name. It's becoming more and more accepted that if you've got those, you know, it actually it really counts for something um, when you're trying to find a job or yeah. a, a formal degree, um, that you do, it's possible to do lots of those remotely now, or at least university courses remotely. So, yeah. Yeah. And you've, you've spoken about, you have to put in the time, you have to be disciplined. And is there anything else that you think these, these are the sort of the success factors in preparing you to make that change? Um, I think the, the one other thing is to, I think one thing which is oftentimes like if you really want to be a standout um, technology application person, and it, yeah. it does depend which side, but but one thing which I've sometimes seen is lacking is the business and the people understanding, like we were saying earlier. Oh yes. And um, so so there there is still a lot of value in really understanding an industry, um, or understanding even a company, um, because that just allows you to apply technology on a next level. So. So taking time, for example, um, and, and also realizing, asking yourself the question, what do I have right now? Maybe, maybe I've got experience in, in, in metallurgy, or maybe I've got experience in underground mining. And that is valuable, right? Yeah. That could help you. Um, that could help you in the future because it gives you a, a, some knowledge which, which, um, and some experience which you can use when you learn these new skills to, to apply to. Um, so, so taking time to understand um, industry, taking time to to also learn the soft skills, challenging yourself. I mean, this is going to be really different for every person, yeah. but um, but challenging yourself. Maybe if you need to learn to engage with people, sign up for 
I don't know, meetups or go to Toastmasters. I don't know if that still exists. That was a big thing when I was young, you know, yeah. to learn to 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 speak in front of people. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, that, that those are two things I would look at. But those are really helpful because, as you say, it, the technology piece is so much was so, you know, interlinked. You you've spoken about the fact that you you've got a mentor. Uh, it is is about that networking. It's about you know connecting with the right people getting their advice, their ideas. And we hear all all the time, it, it is still a people game. And the fact that you are maybe now, let's let's assume you are an operator or you are, as you say, a operator in the plant or operator underground. You actually know that environment so well. You are busy with an application or a software course at the same time in, in your off time. And you see a real problem at work, you, that's really an opportunity to step up and say, let me try and solve this. Let me help the company. And and you apply those skills with the interaction with people. Is that something that you see as an opportunity as well? No, absolutely. I mean, there there is there there is a lot of time wasted in software and technology from not under because of a misunderstanding of the problem. The the very first thing is you have to understand the problem in order to solve it and yeah. and the person who understands the problem best is the person who's closest to it right who deals with it day to day yeah. we had this um i was i had the privilege of working on a few mega projects um in and one of the principles that i learned there is a lean principle called go and see which basically yeah. means walk down to whatever you know if you're if you're working on on project management for a piece of the plant walk down there and just go and see what the situation is like day to day because because if you don't understand what's going on on the ground, you're probably going to create solutions which are not really solving the core issues. Um, so for someone who's 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 right there on the on the face of the problem, they're they're going to really understand what is needed um, to solve it. And I went through that experience as well. When you start learning these new skills um, in technology, so for me it was software um, development. You know, when I started seeing what's possible, so many ideas start popping up. Wow, yes. this is a place where this can add value. This is a place where this can add value. Um, and it's it's actually not it's not like it's it's lots of them are relatively obvious. You know, there's so much opportunity. So so someone who who is um, embarking on this journey, I think they're going to go through the same thing. And yes, you know, there will be times when. Um, you're going to have to maybe build, try it a few times before you hit that one thing which really sticks, but that's where the perseverance comes in, right? Yeah. You've obviously also worked with people that didn't make the grade. Is that just the opposite of what we're speaking about? Or are there a few more characteristics or call it fundamental flaws or character flaws that you see that you're just not going to, this is not going to be for you and What's your experience on people that just didn't make it? What 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 are those pitfalls? Uh, yeah, I I think a part of it is just the um the the assumption that we understand issues we, when actually we don't. Um, so you know that's powerful. What I, you're saying. I, yeah, well, I I think that there the and this is not a technology thing. I mean, this is just a life thing. Is is understanding people's context is is essential to helping them. You're not yeah. going to, you you really have to you really have to make an effort uh, to do that to to get into the shoes of someone else to to understand their way of thinking. It's personally it's a very enriching experience for us as well. You know, for the person that's doing that, but but you really have to do that. Um, and I've made that mistake as well sometimes where if you don't put in the effort to to understand and to to do proper planning um then then you might miss it in the solution that that you actually build um and then yeah i th i think that th the other thing is technology is a walk uh, a crawl um sit walk type of type of um thing where you know it's you're building upon foundations so yeah. so it starts with you know mass so especially um i think that from 
it's it starts from from foundational level when you're at school when you're at university starting to take an interest in these things i mean you look at the people who are who are really making breakthroughs in technology nowadays they were oftentimes the computer nerds you know the people yes. who when when i was young it was like frowned upon to 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 play games or to be a computer nerd um and and now you look at those people they're the people who understand computers you know because they've been tinkering around with them for for so much time or tinkering around with ideas around data science or statistics so there there is value in that allow it to people who really are allowed to um who allow that that passion to develop in themselves who continuously question and and tinker in the field i, I think people like that have an advantage um just because it's not just a job it's it's kind of a it's a it's a way it's a it's a way of doing things you know yeah oh that's powerful uh cornell the the this I, I love this conversation and and it's been a wonderful journey just what you are talking about but feeling that in real life when when we were working at one stage with each other and it was it was real i think you have been practicing call it the good practice or the best practice in terms of technology adoption and it was a really wonderful experience another area of technology that i think is problematic for the operators out there or the people call it doing the execution the mining execution on a day-to-day -day basis whether you're in the plant whether in the maintenance area whether you're in procurement or supply chain or just underground mining or surface mining doesn't matter there's a lot of times over promise and under deliver from a technology solution point of view and what would your recommendation be or yeah how, how, you know how will you address this topic to our listeners i mean mm -hmm. there's there is so much of that and it's very disappointing. And I think it, it gives a lot of, yeah, it slows the process down of adoption very quickly, but you've been very successful in not over promising and then rather over deliver. How did you, what, what caused that? And how did you get to that point? <laughs> yeah, sure. Chris, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think when it comes to, to the reason why people are disappointed with technology, even in my mind, there's there's a whole array of reasons why that could be, um, and it could differ really from case to case. But but I think um, some of the things that I've seen that help um, that 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 help to 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 avoid that. So one of it I would say is, and I mean this is the key. One of the cliche things we say in technology, but I really believe it's true, is is a commitment, especially from leadership of organizations, to the technology journey, because because that is that is part of it, right? I've I've seen that often is in when you're doing um, innovative technologies, you are sometimes going to take risks, and some of them are going to fail. Yeah. Some of them are not going to deliver on the promise which which you thought they would, because you're testing something new. There is an element yes. to it that's experimental. You're breaking right, but, new but ground I, for <laughs> you're you're exactly new yeah. ground for lack of a better mining word. <laughs> exactly, and and that takes time and it takes money yeah. sometimes. And yes. and I I think that I mean venture you know venture capital is like a, a an example of this for me where they they invest in ten companies they know only one is going to make it but the point is that one is going to make it really really well and it makes all the other investments worth it. Yeah, you know, so there is a there is an element, especially if you are applying technology in new ways or you're applying new technologies, where you have to take a bit of that approach, mm -hmm. and then double down on the ones that do work. Um, so, and and also, I I think that there there are many reasons why why people are are adverse to technology technological change. Some of them are just purely, you know, um, I, I don't want to do things differently. Um, some of them are a little bit more more complex than that. And and understanding those reasons are are important. That's where um it comes down to to the problem of understanding. But I think having people who are championing that message in the organization. So I uh, where we work together, you know, I think there was a very big leadership and management drive to say that we are going to become a technologically driven not not a technologically driven, but a technology technologically advanced company, um, and because of that, there was a, a mutual understanding. We are going to do these things. Mm. You know, we're we're going to do them, and we're going to. If they don't work, we're going to adjust them, and if they really don't work, we are going to drop them. We're not, you know, we use common sense, but but there is a commitment um, to do these things, um, and it it just eliminates some of some of the some of the um, kind of the. The excuses some people sometimes have of, of not wanting to adopt it, so I'm I'm not used to it, or I've got other reasons why why I don't want to adopt it. So that is that is definitely um, 
definitely one of them. Okay. I, I threw you a couple of curveballs today. So questions that we, we didn't speak about before the time. So that's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for that because, uh, you know, this is an area of expertise for you and I'm, and I'm, we, I'm learning so much today. One thing that you wanted to talk about when we did our preparation before the time was talent management and the importance of, of call it technology talent in the mining game. Do you want to talk, talk us through your ideas or your, your thinking there? Yeah. So I think that mining, I mean, I'm, I'm quite saddened sometimes to see the type of reputation that mining is starting to get, um, especially in, 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 in circles where, where, where people are advancing technology. It's seen as kind of an exploitive industry, or it's seen as an industry that is, that is um, not desirable, you know, to work in. And, and I think all of that adds up to the point where people who are bright and people who want to make a future in, te in technology if they're not already in the mining industry. Mm -hmm. They're not considering it as one of the top options necessarily um, because there's there's a lot of other places, you know, that they that they can be doing this. I think these things are starting to um, to, to overlap, like as mining energy as in South Africa, I think mining companies are now really starting to look at energy, you know, yeah. so, so energy generation and clean energy generation, then you've got overlap. Um, but oftentimes not seen as, as the, the sexy, kind of industry to go into um, as, a, as a technology expert or as a programmer. Um, and I think that there is there is something that we can do to change that. So helping um, or actually putting active thought into how do we attract um, those people? How do, how do we um, give them the same type of, of working experience and also yeah. the same type of purpose um, that they might find at a, at a clean energy company or that they might find at a company which is helping, um, you know, build. because we do a lot of the same work in, in mining. We, we think a lot about how do we help the communities that, that we work in we, or, or how do we transition away from, from, uh, to, a, to a more clean energy mix. Like all of that stuff is happening. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just think oftentimes people are not aware of it. So sometimes our messaging um, to talent needs needs to change. But also the, you know, there 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 are the practical things as well. Like there's such a there's such a crunch for talent at the moment. People are like, you you get free lunch every day. You know, all all these Silicon Valley ideas that have that have that have moved through to um to all the industries. And maybe maybe our technology sections of the business operate a bit differently because they they've got a specific purpose to play um to be innovative and and to and to um and to really change the way that 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 we do things and and i think another another key there is we need people who have got a passion or a vision for technology and a good understanding of mining companies and the industry who yeah. can play the 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 translator or the facilitator if you will between those two so how do I bring in these, um, you know, these these people who are who know the technology world or or the the data world, um, into the the mining environment? How do I facilitate that transition for them? What are the things that I can put in place to really give them an amazing work experience there, um, and to make them feel that they are making a difference, that they that they are doing meaningful and purpose purposeful work, um, in the mining industry, and they're changing it for the better. Yeah, oh, some great ideas there. And I think we've had firsthand experience of, you know, even transitioning some of the technical experts out of their fields, uh, whether you're a metallurgist and you just want to go into the data science world, there's, there's opportunities there as well because you can make a real difference because you understand the business so well. As another example, just of what you've mentioned. Mm. Cornell, this has been fascinating and I'm sure there's a lot more to be said. And I don't, you know, we said this podcast is is only a, a certain time frame, and our listeners are either on a on a treadmill or on a mountain bike like you. Hopefully, not on a mountain bike. You need to focus there on the single tracks, but uh, maybe they're on the road now. bike and they just, you know, doing a long, slow distance ride, and and they're listening to this podcast. Uh, it it has been so so enjoyable for me today to listen to you and learn from you. Any last remarks or comments or anything else that you want to touch on before we wrap up and as we wrap up? Um, Chris, do I just think that for me, stuff. <laughs> inspirational, inspirational stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think two things. Um, two 
firstly, um, to on the technology side, um, one of the, the most important messages or lessons that, that I've learned, one of my favorite books of all time is Good to Great by Jim Collins. Yes. And in that book, you know, he talks about technology and he makes the case that technology should be an accelerator of momentum rather than a creator of momentum. And one of the key messages that I think we should drive is that technology is not here to take your jobs and to, to you know, disrupt things and to make life difficult. It's, it's, like, it's like anything. It's, it's like iron. You know, iron ore can be used to make um, weapons, which is a bad thing, but it can also be used to build houses and to create you know, wonderful things, you know. So it's, technology is something that we need to take ownership of um, so that we can mold it uh, to create acceler- to create acceleration and to create momentum in our businesses uh, and viewing it as that right not the answer to all our problems um not something which is which is which is there to make our lives hard but something which is there to to facilitate and to help us to do what we do better um i think if we have that mindset it's going to make uh, a massive difference and then just uh, for you know people who are considering um, mining and technology. I would say that I can see that the mining industry is um, it's it's an interest industry which has been which is there are certain things which is very kind of it's been operating the same way for a very long time. But there are pockets of change that are starting to take place. Right there, I think we're in a super exciting time um, in 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 technology in mining um, because people are starting to embrace. Um, this the new ways of doing things and and they're starting to become open to innovation they're recognizing the need um, and and they're recognized especially i mean mining is now facing challenges it's never faced before um so you know just the other day i was i, I heard there there is this this battery passport that came out now which is like it's a traceability thing for when people buy batteries if you're going to buy a battery for your electric vehicle uh, you can actually see where the, the the materials in there came from and what what for example the mining methods are that were used to mine those materials and suddenly you've got consumers who are who are super far removed from the products the eventual product that they buy you've got them understanding all the way down to how you're mining those materials and making decisions right from which one am i going to buy depending on how this this metal was mined or the company that mined it do they have sustainable practices so mining is changing and um and i think that is a massive opportunity uh, for people who are who are who want to be involved in that who want to shape maybe the future of mining as we say um i think now is the right time to to get involved um and like we said the resources are there you know there's there's no excuse you you really can can upskill yourself or you can you can find resources to help you to to learn how to apply these skills so it's a super exciting time yeah indeed uh cornell thank you so so much uh if people want to have more of a discussion with you or the company that you're in how do they get all of you the easiest is probably via linkedin so just cornell Foster on linkedin okay um yeah, if you if you add me there, you can reach out to me directly um, via message, and I'll I'll be sure to reply. Awesome, Cornell, it's been a privilege, it's been an honor. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for being on today's podcast, and to our listeners, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll take a wrap up at the end uh, where we're just going to summarize what Cornell has, has taught me today. So we'll we'll finish off with that. And Cornell, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. Thanks, Christy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back, everybody. Wow, that was a really fantastic conversation with Cornell. I want to take a moment just to summarize what I've learned and what it, yeah, what we've learned today from Cornell. Five things. Number one. People need to know the why of the technology that you are using or implementing. Number two, if people don't use the technology tools that you have developed for them, then you've not been successful. Number three, I will only apply technology where it makes things better. That's coming from the development person that's 
developing these wonderful solutions for us. Number four, bring people along on the technology journey. And number five, a lot of tools that are used today was through self-learning on the internet. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, have an awesome day. Enjoy your mining.